Emma Smith. Uh, my mum um, was from Cornwall and my dad is from um, Ireland. Um, at the age of three, uh, my dad went back to Ireland to look after um, my half-sisters and I moved to uh, a town called Hawley, which is next to Gatwick Airport with my mum. My childhood was, um, was pretty sheltered and, and, and stuff like that. My mum brought me up with good morals and uh, good mannerisms and things like that. Um, and I was taught to believe in God, but I never actually prayed. Um, at primary school, um, I was always sort of like the class clown, uh, the joker. Um, I had a lot of attention from girls um, and stuff like that. I had a lot of friends, a lot of people liked me. I was a very likeable child. <clears throat> I went to Oakwood School on the Balcombe Road. I was still living in Hawley at this time. At secondary school, I um, sort of changed really. I become more interested in gaming. Um, I played a lot of games online, and I, I had I had really good sort of equipment for for my age. I had a lot better gaming equipment than a lot of kids. So um, gaming sort of took over my life alongside sort of skating and going going to the park as well. I was quite interested in in skating and BMXing, but um, towards the end of secondary school. I, I got more into gaming, so therefore I was, I was hanging around with sort of nerdy people and you know just discussing games at school, school so I was opening myself to bullying um, a little bit. Um, the main reason I was sort of opening myself to bullying was mainly just because of the people I was hanging around with. Being involved, well being into gaming, um, I was hanging around with a lot of nerdy people and they were, they were getting bullied. I've always been the type of person that will stand up for myself and, um, you know, uh, stand my ground. I, I was always taught that from a young age. So at school, my, my, my GCSEs were pretty much flat Cs, um, very, very sort of straight line, probably due to the fact that I was more concerned with, with, with gaming than, than studying. Um, but my favorite subjects were business studies and graphics. At the age of 16 was when I really become to sort of come out of my shell. My mum decided to move um, house to another town called Crawley which was more sort of um, up and coming just the other side of Gatwick Airport is trying to be you know a bit more bit more like London a bit more westernized um, and at this time is when I went to college as well I was going to college in Rygate um, and I took took the decision to study um, business and IT college is when I really started to come out of my shell uh, I had a moped I was, you know, starting to get back into into girls and, you know, socialising with people again. Um, like I said, my decisions to choose business and IT. My mum sort of pushed me towards IT because, you know, I was good with computers and I, I was really sort of into that. But since getting a moped and going to college and seeing other people, um, you know, a few different cultures and things like that, mixing with people, I realised I was behind a little bit. So I needed to catch up. Um, so you know, I really just, I really just, I really just started to push and push. Um, you know, get involved with with people, and I realised I had to, I had to make a make a catch up somehow. Um, so realising that I had to catch up to, you know, where where other more social and more popular people were at my age, I decided to hang around with a bad crowd because I knew that would get me there quicker. Older people, I would learn more quickly, and um, you know, progress faster. So at college I got kicked out of um, IT uh, for playing too many games just because I didn't enjoy the teaching style. Um, I, I, I just played games the whole of the lesson. I actually got suspended for that. But um, business, I was more interested in it. Had my mind going a little bit better. Uh, the people that I was hanging around with were also in my class. So, you know, sort of gassed it up a little bit for me. We have fun um, and these sorts of things. Um, so, you know, I decided to pursue business at university level just because I'd seen all the movies and, and stuff about university life and I was really, really interested in, you know, pushing, pushing myself out there and getting myself out there more socially known. So my grades from college, they were pretty sort of mediocre. So uh, that sort of limited my choices into getting into top universities, this and that. Um, so I ended up doing um, a university course at a, at a sort of higher education college in Guildford, but it was all done sort of through the University of Surrey. Um, and quickly, when I when I when I went to that college, I made friends with people that were at the university. Um, just just because I was sort of popular and sort of a, a very outgoing guy, I was uh, probably one of the most outgoing guys on my course. Um, I was actually made sort of course representative for that uni as well, um, and I was really sort of out there. Um, 
out there with it. So studying, at business, studying business at university really had my mind going and I decided that I wanted to make money alongside doing my university course. At the, cu at the current time I had a job sort of in McDonald's, minimum wage, it was all a bit, all a bit long winded and you know um, seeing people back in, in the area that I was from were making more money on the streets, you know, um, I, wanted to, I wanted to see a bit more of that paper. And obviously university you get grants, they give you a couple thousand here, a couple thousand there and I was getting more and more hungry for the money. So I, I set up sort of a little, uh, well I set up a little bit of eBay business, I uh, had a shop on eBay uh, selling different bits and bobs and I was making quite a good earning from that. Um, but this is when I started to get involved with street life because I was so hungry for the money, I just wanted more and more. And I tried making, you know, a bit of money on the streets as well as eBay um, and it all became a bit too much for me really. When I got into to year three of university, um, about a term in, you know, it just got too much, and I sort of I sort of shut down. I had a bit of a, I had a bit of a breakdown, if you like, because I couldn't juggle everything at once. Like I said, I wasn't living at uni at this time. I was commuting, um, and it all just got a bit too much for me. So after suspending my studies at uni, um, I was sort of left to manage the, the the two things that I was still doing, which was a bit of eBay and a bit of, um, you know making money on the streets um, and hanging around with, the, with a bad crowd. Um, obviously, being, having gone to uni, um, a lot of people, you know, I was, I was quite a very sort of sociable person and I really enjoyed the sort of social aspects which sort of led me away from the eBay money and more towards the, the money I was making on the streets. And over sort of the, 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 the end of college and the start of university, I'd got involved in drugs, um, you know, smoking a bit of pot here and there and taking some more hardcore drugs going out partying, typical sort of uni lifestyle. So, you know, I got caught more up in the, in the stuff on the streets than, um, you know, staying humble and doing my own thing at home. Um, so now I'd found my feet a bit better. Um, I had a nice bit of paper in my pocket and my, uh, my little moped license had run out, which wasn't really a problem for me at the time because my area was pretty good for sort of public transport and stuff. But, you know, I wanted a branch a bit further afield. So I decided to go and do my moped license again. When I went to go do my moped license, the, the guy informed me that you know they were changing the changing the law, and that if I wanted my full bike license, now's the best time to do it. And you know I was so sort of up on paper, I decided that I'm going to go for it. I laid down the paper and I got my full bike license in three days. I passed with no no minors at all, straight pass. Um, you know, and I think the day after I went out and bought a big bike, FZR 600. Um, you know, it can do 0 to 60 in about 3.2 seconds, something like that. So, you know, I'm, t I'm 21 years old, I've got a big bike um, and this really sort of put me out there and, 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 you know, got me real sort of gassed up. Um, you know, it was one of, one, of the, one of the best vehicles on the block, if you like, in my area. <clears throat> so as a means to sort of keep my, keep my bike on the road and, and, and do all these things, um, you know, I was getting deeper and deeper involved with crime, um, you know. Uh, different bits and bobs. It was, it was very sort of varied. My area was very multicultural. I was involved with all the different sort of cultures and they were all making money in different ways. Um, so one day I was on the way to a nightclub. Um, I had, you know, uh, quite a lot of drugs on me. Uh, my intention was to go out and sell those drugs to, to, to make an income. Um, so I was on the way to the nightclub and we got stopped by the police, unfortunately for me. Okay, so, you know, I got arrested, um, it was nothing new to me, I'd been arrested quite a few times before, but this time they caught me with quite a lot of stuff and I was, I was quite worried. Um, and, you know, it was all sort of at a point in my life where everything was, was um, you know, bottom of the bottle, um, you could put it, put it like that. So they took me to the police station, I was really sort of worrying about, um, you know, what they were going to find at my house, what they'd caught me with, the situation I'd been caught in, all of these things were, you know, playing on my mind. Um, and I was really starting to, starting to sort of panic, you know, my mum, me and my mum's relationship had been broken down over the, over the years because of the things that I was doing and this, this, this could possibly be my final straw. So I was sitting there in the cell for, for, for about an hour um, and I decided, you know, you know I, was, I decided I was really sort of in a hole, if you like, um, and I felt like praying, I felt like, I felt like, you know, I needed a bit of God in my life. Um, I'd never made a prayer before but I just felt like, you know, you know, oh God, I've, I'm in a situation right now that, that needs to be fixed. So I remember pressing the buzzer um, and asking the policeman for, for, uh, for the Bible. Um, because, you know, my mum, if anything, was Christian, uh, even though she wasn't very practicing. 
So um, I remember I pressed the buzzer and I asked, uh, asked the police officer for, for a copy of the Bible um, and he just laughed at me to be honest, um, you know, he was laughing at me like I was, I was some little kid um, in the wrong place at the wrong time, um, but you know, being brought up by, by sort of a single parent, you know, I always wanted to be the man and I knew I was more of a man than him. So the officer brought me the Bible, um, you know, never, I'd never even looked at a Bible before. I flicked through a couple of pages and I was, I was reading the Bible and it was really, really hitting me deep in the heart. Really sort of sincere. I couldn't believe like I'd never read this book before, you know. And, and you know, it's, it'd been spoken about so much. So, you know, I spent that night pretty much, in, in that one night I probably read about a third of the Bible. And, you know, it hit me so, so hard that, um, you know, I decided to pray that night. And I made quite a few prayers um, about the situation that I was in. So yeah, I was, um, I was released on bail um, and I also I had, a, I had a job in the airport as well um, at this time. I was working for Travelex uh, in South Terminal, Gatwick, I remember it, I remember it clearly. Um, now, you know, obviously I'd got a sort of a, a little connection with, with God at this time. Um, and I remember thinking, I, I was actually on the way, it was my first day, I was starting Travelex. I was on the way to the airport in a taxi because I was running late just because I just got out of the police station. Literally that day I started this new job. Um, so I was on the way to my new job in a taxi and I'm thinking to myself, how can I ask God for help when, um, you, know, I've, you know, I don't pray every day. I just, I just pray, prayed when I, when I needed something, when I was in a bad place. So this thought was sort of pondering in my mind. Anyway, I got to the airport and I was walking towards Travelex. I noticed on my right there was a prayer room. Um, so I decided on my lunch break, I'm going to go to the prayer room and check it out. So I went to the prayer room and I decided to pray again, just purely because of the thoughts that I had on the way in the taxi um, and whatnot, this and that. This sort of become, you know, a regular thing for me. Every day I went to work, I decided to pray. Um, and then I was improving my sort of connection with God. Um, and I was meeting a lot of people in the prayer room that you wouldn't, you wouldn't really think. I see a lot of um, Muslim people in there and I noticed that they, they, they washed before they prayed. But, you know, I didn't want to become a Muslim. Um, I was more interested in, in, in Christianity, everything was new for me um, and I was just happy with where I was at with the Bible. So at this time I was praying every single day um, but my life, um, although I had a job, my outside life was, was going rapidly downhill. Everything was sort of crumbling and you know really sort of falling apart. Um, I found myself using a lot of intoxicants at this time um, and it was all just a bit peak for me really. Um, so yeah, there was one night when things